gentlemen, to an all-new reaction and review. Tonight, guys, I'm checking out an action film from 2006. That movie is Ultraviolet. Really wish I could tell you anything else about this movie. I know it stars Mila... It's Mila Jovovich. Um... I think she fights vampires? And it's in the future? Um... Yeah, I don't know any other details about this goddamn movie. I really don't. I totally wish I did, but I don't. I'm flying totally blind. Um, hoping for it to be good, and I know that Mila Jovovich can act. Kind of. Under certain circumstances. Okay, you know what? Um, I'm just going to hope that this movie's halfway decent. I have no idea, but the only way I'm going to find out, guys, if this thing's got any merit to it at all, is if I shut up and I push play. And I'm going to do that... Right now. So, without further ado, it's time to kick back, relax, and check out Ultraviolet. Alright guys, I understand that this is a stupid question, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Are we ever going to get anything in this movie, even closely resembling a plot? This movie's been going on for 20 minutes now, and I'm going to tell you everything I've picked up from it. So Violet, our main character, was forced to lose her daughter because the government said so. So now she's at war with the government, which means she's siding with what basically can be called vampires, but the filmmakers apparently don't want to call them vampires because fuck you, that is why. Apparently the filmmakers wanted this thing to look like a fucking comic, uh, comic book, and in order to do that, every character looks as if their faces have been coated in fucking wax, which makes the whole thing look ugly as shit. Our CG here would have been primitive in the 1990s, and goddammit, I'm looking for any reason to watch this thing. I'm looking for any reason to continue watching this fucking thing, because guys, if we do not get a plot and it's just going to be more of this for about an hour, then it's going to be a painful, sucky bullshit hour, and I'm not looking forward to it. Alright, guys, I really do have to ask this. Why is it that there is a startling amount of detail visible in things like walls, buildings, clothing? Why is it that all of that looks like it's in stunning HD, and every character's face looks as if it came off of a fourth generation Betamax tape? the fuck is going on with that? It really is making a stupid movie and making it look painfully ugly for no other fucking reason than to make it look ugly. And it really is making this thing more and more painful to sit through, dude. You know, guys, you would think that by this point in the film, there'd be some reason, any reason, to fucking care about what's going on. That is how plotless this film is. There is no reason to care about any of this. The closest thing that we had to a conflict was Violet trying to save this fucking kid from both sides because both sides want him dead. And they kneecapped that when they say point blank that this kid is dead shit in eight hours. Good. So now we don't have a fucking plot. Because even if she saves this fucking kid from these idiotic vampires, she can't save the kid from his impending doom. So if the kid dies, so what? If either side gets him, well, the kid's got maybe a scant few hours left, so who fucking cares? There is no conflict here, and the movie actively went out of its way to take out the conflict. Meaning there's no reason to watch this. Meaning this entire thing is a fucking waste. And this guy's, right now, I'm, I'm calling it right now, this is by far the worst vampire film I have ever seen. Considering the fact that I've watched most of the fucking Twilight films, that is nothing short of fucking insulting. But yeah, this thing sucks. And goddammit, I want it to fucking end, and I want it to fucking end sooner rather than later. Okay, guys, I think I found a problem with this film deciding to go with a PG-13 rating. So, Violet is in a white room, having a sword fight with numerous guards who, for whatever reason, are also wearing white. You want to know what there isn't visible anywhere in here? There isn't a speck of blood in sight. She has stabbed and slashed the shit out of like a dozen guys in white suits. Not a single... Oh, wait, look, she finally has... Oh, whoa, there actually is blood. She has like four or five cuts on her hands. 
that's it though for for blood there's no other blood to be found oh and now the blood apparently is coloring her outfit because of course it fucking does god this movie is so fucking dumb how much time is left there's less than there's less than 20 minutes left thank fuck for that well guys that was ultraviolet thank fuck that's over jesus christ okay um writing i know every time i cover one of these action films there's always some smarmy jackass who feels the urge to leave a comment effectively telling me that i am a moron for complaining about acting in an action film because you shouldn't expect good writing in an action film and then I always have to inform these douchebags, I'm not expecting good writing. I am at the very least expecting a competent story. Something that is going to justify us watching your stupid fucking movie. And guess what? A lot of these action films I've covered for this series don't have that. But I will say, almost all of them had at least the faintest hint of a fucking plot, of the faintest hint of something interesting going on. Ultraviolet doesn't. Let me just walk you through what the base plot of the film is. So, Violet is a vampire. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. She's not a vampire. She is a, she is a hemophage. Because apparently, calling them a vampire would have been a goddamn sin. Alright, so she is a hemophage. The hemophage... Fuck it, vampires. Fuck this movie in its retarded terms. They're fucking vampires. The vampires are at war with the humans, specifically the humans who work for who work for the Arch Ministry, who have been going out of their way to try to to, to try to execute and kill all vampires on the planet. Um so basically it's vampires versus humans. It's set in the future. Um Violet was sent by the vampires to go into Arch Ministry HQ or one of their research labs or just fuck it, I don't even I don't even care anymore. To pick up a weapon that was in a briefcase, she opens up the briefcase and it's a kid in a pool of water. Why? I don't fucking know. Uh Violet, who has memories of when of when the Arch Ministry terminated her pregnancy, all of a sudden, all of a sudden all of a sudden gets all of a sudden gets motherly feelings and wants to keep this this kid safe. She is then told that the kid is guaranteed to fucking die and that whatever virus is growing in his body, which is which apparently the arch ministry wants to take the shit that's in his body and turn it into like a airborne pesticide that's going to kill all of the remaining vampires. Um, if the kid dies, then that virus dies with him, but she wants to keep him alive. The Arch Ministry wants him, the vampires want him, just so that way the Arch Ministry doesn't fucking get him. Um, the kid dies, I guess. Violet is shot, and she's supposedly left left for dead, and then she, and then she comes back. She thinks that the kid isn't dead yet. It just keeps going. But there is no real plot there. Guys, what I just summed up should probably have been faint details in a far deeper film, but I just gave you the first hour and like 15 minutes of this film. The only thing I left out was the flaming sword fight. Let's touch on that. When I think shit that'd be awesome in action films, I think Two people in a darkened room with swords covered in fire having a goddamn sword fight should probably be the coolest fucking thing you will ever see. But the people who made this film apparently figured out how to fuck up a flaming sword fight. The answer, little spoiler, is to introduce is to introduce a squirt gun to the fucking fight. No, I'm not kidding. I'm not fucking I wish I was kidding. But the flaming sword fight ends with a squirt gun. So apparently, Super Soaker beats Flaming Sword every time. Jesus fucking Christ. Nothing in this movie makes any sense. I talked earlier about the virus which is in this kid's body. Apparently, the first time that we hear about this about this stupid virus, apparently the Arch Ministry wants to take it, synthesize it into essentially a pesticide that kills all vampires. Then all of a sudden, 
we get this twist out of we get this twist out of bumblefuck nowhere that tells us that no actually the virus is going to kill everything and if they want and if the people want to survive then they are going to queue up every goddamn day for a one day for a one day treatment given by the arch ministry why because apparently the arch ministry stopped fucking caring all right at what point did this virus change from one thing to another? I don't know, and the movie never bothers to fucking explain it. The kid apparently writes down the cure for fucking vampirism or hemophagism or whatever the fuck the illness would be that they want to call it here. You know. And that never fucking, and that never gets fucking played out outside of Violet, we have a cure. Good. Fucking use it. Shit, I don't fucking care. Guys, this movie builds up on a whole lot of shit and then never cashes in on any of it. Now, I know that bitching about writing exclusively with an action film is normally not the best thing. But guys, first of all, if you have no reason to even bother watching it because the writing is that non-existent, then really you shouldn't have to talk about much else. But I am going to touch on everything the fuck else. What about the action sequences? Well... Uh, we have a helicopter versus motorcycle fight, which has CG that would have looked shitty on the Sega Saturn. Uh, every other fight scene essentially looks as if somebody watched the fucking Matrix once and decided that they could try to copy that fucking shit. Unless, of course, they're jumping into stuff that looks like it came out of a video game, such as such as the first, such as the first first person scenes inside inside of the rooftop fight where we actually see the hand and the gun at the bottom of the screen so that way it looks like something out of fucking golden eye with graphics that were about as good as the shit that was in golden eye guys the 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 fucking fight scenes in this movie are awful because they all literally feel as if somebody just watched the matrix and said i can totally do that and never bothered to put in any effort to make it look even halfway decent. The fight scenes are broken up with mountains and mountains of jump cuts and shitty angles. So even people who like action sequences are not going to like what's here because it's so poorly shot. It is. Guys, I talked about the flaming sword, sword fight earlier. That should be the coolest thing you should ever see in this movie, and it's probably one of the dumbest things you will ever see and the action in this movie is so over the fucking top guys this movie is rated pg-13 i'm going to tell you right now these fucking action sequences would only be interesting to a 10 year old a 10 year old on a massive caffeine caffeine high who doesn't give a shit past that nobody else is going to care about this that is how bad the action in this action film is I have railed on action films in the past, guys, and I will say that I have been kind of harsh on quite a few of them. All of them look like massive gold compared to this. I will even take the shallow, boring fight scenes in the fucking raid, because at least there was some effort put, in, put into those. Not here. Hell no. So, our writing sucks. Our action is pathetic. What about our acting? Well, when you're given a script that has almost no plot, has dialogue that makes no fucking sense, nothing in this film makes even the slightest lick of sense, do you really think the actors were going to give a shit? Of course not. Nobody tried. I said earlier, guys, that Mila fucking Jovovich can act under, under the best circumstances. That means you have to hand her a script that doesn't suck fat, throbbing dick. Otherwise, she's not going to fucking try. Here, Violet essentially sounds like Mila Jovovich is trying to sound like Snake fucking Pliskin and didn't bother to practice it outside of just don't put any feeling in and just sound macho and tough. And even then, she doesn't sound macho and tough. She sounds more brooding and whiny. And the rest of our cast doesn't fucking try in the slightest so our acting sucks what about our camera work <laughs> camera work here is where it gets weird i commented on this earlier but now i'm going to go into fucking detail okay so this film was shot in high def it was made in 2006 so you'd almost expect the damn thing to have real high detailed 
everything. And we do, for the most part. Buildings, clothing, sets, anything that's not a CG helicopter or car or motorcycle, or just a CG anything, let's just be straight, the CG in this film was shit. Um, but everything that was like a physical set, physical clothing, weapons, all of that looks great. Uh, high, high mention goes to Violet's sword here, which is covered in some kind of, in some kind of runic writing. Really wish I could tell you what the fuck anything on that goddamn sword, sword even means, but the film doesn't bother to explain that. The movie doesn't bother to explain anything. But still, it looks fine, and there's a ton of detail there. And there's a ton of detail in every character's body, at except for their faces. I mentioned earlier that the characters' faces essentially look almost like they've all been covered in wax, so as to remove all detail there. And as the movie goes on, it looks less and less like they're all covered in wax and devoid of all facial fucking characteristics to speak of. It looks more like this thing was shot in 1080p, and then somebody just decided to lasso every character's face and then apply the Photoshop blur filter to it. Uh, so everything just looks fuzzy and hazy and blurred. Oh, except for the eyes. The eyes are still in high def, of course. Because, you know, why honestly have a well-fucking-defined nose or cheekbones when you still have eyes that, that the viewer can fucking see? I don't know why they went for that stylistic choice. I'm going to assume, this is just me taking a wild guess, they were probably trying to make the thing look like a living comic book. I'm basing that on the fact that... Um, well, the well, the fact that the closing credits are all are all written in a generic comic book font, the fact that the opening credits were played out over a bunch of fucking bullshit comic book covers to make to make Ultraviolet look as if it's a comic book property that's been around since the '60s, you know, I'm going to assume they were going for some kind of like a comic book look. But I'm going to tell you right now, if there was any penciler and inker combo who turned in shit that was that blurry the publisher would have probably fucking fired them. Comic books, guys, are all about the details. You can't have a face that is blurry and almost completely devoid of detail except for the eyes. That doesn't fucking work. You have anchors who go in specifically to add all of those details, to add all of that shading, all of that shadow. And the retards who made this apparently didn't pick up on that fact and decided that, Nobody needs to have fe features on their fucking face when we have when we have when we have very very defined suits and hair and eyes. Who cares if the nose, the mouth, the cheeks, and even the sides of the head are all soft focus, blurry horseshit? And it makes the whole movie look fucking homely as hell. It's even more baffling when you have scenes where you've got a person and they are in a suit and the suit is got has has got all the definition and all the detail a blu-ray disc is going is going to fucking allow them and then their face looks as if and the face looks as if uh, as if they just entered the witness fucking protection program and they need their face hidden it looks awful looks fucking it makes it makes this stupid movie even harder to sit through man holy shit and, you know, that was obviously done in CG, and I've already bitched about all of the other CG in this film. Special effects guys in this movie are awful. Holy shit. The only thing that they apparently knew how to do right was to, was to on the fly, change the color of clothing and hair, which is why that's like the one and only effect that they do well, where, where... Early on, Violet shows up and she takes off her helmet and her black hair just turns purple as it goes all the way down her head. And then her clothing changes from, like, red to yellow to blue to, you know, and all of this is all is all within the opening sequence. And then in the closing, when she's in the all-white room having the most bloodless sword, so sword fight in the history of cinema... She notices a couple of cuts on her hands, and then she squeezes them, and then the blood, like, seeps into her gloves, and then it turns her whole suit red, and that was, like, the one effect that they got down right. It was the only effect that they did even moderately well. And it really, guys, is less a fucking special effect and more 
the kind of idiotic bullshit you would use in a fucking commercial for something. It's not really something that you base your entire movie on, but it is the one and only effect that they actually figured out how to fucking do. So apparently I'm supposed to give them a, a free a free pass. At least that is at least that is what I'm going to assume. No, no, fuck it. Your special effects were shit. Except for one retarded little fucking gimmick that, that you figured out how to fucking do. Bravo and kiss my ass. Music here is essentially just garbage. It really, the, guys, the music in this film is almost as bad as the writing. No, actually, that, no, no, no. That there's a horrible insult to the music. Nothing will ever be almost as bad as that fucking writing. But still, guys, our score sucks and our soundtrack is shit. Ultimately, guys, am I able to recommend Ultraviolet? No. There's, no. Fuck it. This is the worst. I cannot even explain to you guys how bad this thing is. This is... Without question, the stupidest action film I've ever seen. It very well is probably the worst action film I've ever seen. It's certainly the worst movie I have ever watched involving vampires, which absolutely floors me because I never thought that anything would be able to unseat Twilight from, 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 from that horrible throne. But behold, the worst vampire film I've ever seen. Jesus fucking Christ. No, guys, I cannot recommend this at all. This movie is garbage. Now, Ultraviolet came off the Amazon wish list. The person who sent it in was a YouTuber by the name of Josh WBHS 2010. Uh, please guys head on over to his YouTube channel. I'm going to assume it's youtube.com slash user slash Josh WBHS 2010. Uh, Josh, thank you. I was really curious about this movie. Uh, wasn't sure if it was going to be any fucking good. I certainly wish that it was good, but it wasn't. It was a torturous almost 90 minutes, and I wouldn't have known that if you if you hadn't have sent it in, and for that I thank you, you are totally fucking awesome. Once more, that is youtube.com slash user slash Josh WBHS 2010. Yes, guys, I have it written down. I, unfortunately, I never memorized that screen name. I'm terribly sorry. Now, Jesus Christ. I think I need to go find a good vampire film just to just fucking remind me of what good vampire films are. Um, I think I'll start with The Lost Boys and I'll work my way from there. Lord knows I've got plenty of vampire films in my, you know, Blu-ray, in my Blu-ray collection. In fact, actually, from here I can see The Lost Boys and I see The Monster Squad. Those two are sounding really fucking good right now. Frankly, though, anything would be better than sitting through ultraviolet for even another goddamn second. God damn, this movie was just that bad. Anyway, guys, with that, we come to the close of another reaction and review. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, take care, and I will see you all in the near future. Peace.